Afternoon everyone. Right, just have a little think about the video that I posted the other day there about the ammunition pouches. And it got me thinking, um, what I might do is show you what I carry in my small pack for instance. Um, and then I might do another video later on about the contents of the actual webbing itself. Um, so, what I've got here is it's a basic um, 37 pattern small pack. Right. Uh, this was carried by every seven soldier during the war period. At the top, under the flap, everyone carried a rain cape. Right. You also, most of the time, had an enamel mug. It either came in brown like this one, or white enamel mug like this. Right. Doesn't really matter which is which. I, I think. Um, you can pick these up relatively inexpensive. Um, I got this one in a, an old fashioned hardware shop for instance. Um, only cost uh, 2 or 3 pounds if, if that. So they're not that expensive. And they are ideal for just sitting down, having a brew, not looking out of place. Right? Excellent, excellent things to have. And most of the time, you'll see them attached to the back of the pack just underneath the the back strap right um, the only thing I don't like about them is the noise it's like having a bell on the back of your pack but it seemed to be in the photographs you see them just hanging around at the back here right so pop that there <clears throat> I'll open up the lid right so underneath this I personally carry, it's just a small sheet of canvas, but what I, what I do use this for is I have a Bren gun and when I'm putting it out on display, I'll put this underneath the Bren gun and I've got a box of uh, fire brass, just loads of empty cartridges, right? And I'll just scatter them around on top of this. The only reason to do that is it's easier for the public to see the empty cases than it is to see them lying on the grass. That's the only reason I carry this, right? Uh, it's just old fashioned, it's, it's kind of like an old kit bag, you know, it's that sort of material. But it does the job that I need it for. Not 100% accurate, but it means the public can see the, the, the brass, that's it. Alright, and then underneath the flap here, I've got the rain cape, just rubberized uh, material. Still fairly easy to pick up nowadays. Um, you're going to find these green ones a lot easier, a lot easier than you are going to find the tan ones. Um, the tan ones are more correct for that period, but you know, if you need to find one easier, you know, a green one will do until you can find a, a tan one. <coughs> right. On the inside of here. Sorry, at the top, what I do is I pack all the, the bits that I think I might be using more. So you've got your housewife set, right? A lot of times, especially with these older style uniforms, they're covered in buttons. You're going to have buttons for your braces, um, buttons for your pockets, everything. It's, so the, the likelihood of you losing buttons is quite, quite high. Right, and on the inside, I've got things like needles... Uh, safety pins, small ball of wool for darning your socks, right? That's a good thing to learn how to do, especially with um, if you're wearing like wool socks. You know, you can't just give them to your mum to darn, you know? You're going to have to learn how to do it yourself. So, wool, you know, packets with thread, yeah, all things like this. And you can still pick these up. Fairly easy. Go to old needle and thread craft shops, things like that. You're going to find this stuff. Right? And in the bottom, I've got loads of buttons. Right? Plastic buttons. You know, like the buttons that you would get on the, the, the rain cape, for instance. Loads of these. Um, these metal disc buttons. Right? You get these on the battle dress. And... For some reason, these are always coming off. I think it's because of the, the them made of metal. You know, they rub against the thread and they pop off fairly easy. 
So you're going to need a supply of these, right? Just put that to the side. This here is your wash kit, your wash roll. So in there you're going to have your basic stuff for, you know, keeping yourself clean, you know, spare bits and pieces, right? Now what I carry is I've got spare laces, I've got a button stick, I've got a cutthroat razor, I've got a shaving brush, I've got a toothbrush, comb. Uh, this is my granddad's old pocket knife, by the way, and it, it looks like he, every time, every time I think about him, I always remember him having this. So I've just started carrying it in my kit as well. Uh, See, he served in the war as well. He was in the Navy during World War II. So, you know, I don't know if that dates from then, but... I mean, I'm 45. And I always remember him having this in his pocket, and I just assumed that he's had it for years and years before I was born. Uh, right, we've got fruit powder. It gets everywhere, by the way. And... Oof, one of those little uh, metal mirrors. Right? So I'll keep all that in my wash roll. Right there, there's talcum powder, everything now. I keep a shell dressing in there as well. I have a couple of these. I've got one in, I've got one in my battle dress pocket uh, on the trousers. Um, on one of my helmets, I've got a, a field dressing in the helmet net, which you see in, in photographs quite often. Uh, <clears throat> this one as well is dated May 1944. Uh, you can still pick these up as well, fairly easily. Different, they come in different sizes as well. Uh, start from the back here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I've got a pair of three finger gloves. I have the old head over, or you know, like the, the old sort of classic commando hat, like from the. Cockershell Heroes, things like this. These are brilliant bits of kit, by the way. Um, this one, I think this one's dated 40. I have two of them. I've got a 1940 and I've got a 1942 version. I have this balaclava. Balaclava helmet. Knitted for me uh, by a woman down in Wales. I contacted her through Facebook years ago. And... She had the pattern and she was able to knit this for me. And I have wore this on so many times at, at weekends. You know, get yourself tucked into your great coat, balaclava tucked in the front, and you are nice and toasty. Uh, what else have I got at the back? Got myself a scarf. Managed to pick this one up in a charity shop of all places. I don't know if you can see that. On the label, uh, manufactured in 1944. So this stuff is still out there. You're going to have to hunt for it, but it's just amazing what sort of things pop up. Okay. Now this stuff here, with this being soft gear, I keep this in the back of the pack against my back, so it offers a bit of padding, right? The harder stuff. Like your mess tins and things like that, you're going to keep in the front pockets. Right, so got a little bag here, and inside I've got my knife fork spoon set. And I managed to find a old tea, teaspoon as well, and it's perfect for your tin mug, right. And again, these are all period dated. I'm trying to see if that will focus up. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if it's because it's maybe silver. But if not, <clears throat> I mean, these are what, 1945. Let's see what these ones are. Uh, these are post war. But you can still pick up wartime made. Uh, Equipment like that. 
Now, this one. I picked this up down at a market. And it's a full complete set. So I missed tins with a ration bag. The thing I noticed, it's got the guy's dog tag on it. The old uh, British dog tag. And I thought, you just don't find that sort of stuff. And it's a matching, matching pair of uh, mess tins. Same, same number and everything on it, same manufacturer number. And what I keep inside this is a reproduction of a 24 hour ration box. Right, so basically that, that lives in there. The box is empty, but I have a full one in there as well. And also in the bag, I've got one of these foldable cookers. Right, used this hundreds of times. All I use with this is the solid fuel, you know, the hexamine tablets. Um, so I use that with that, with, with the mess tins, sorry. I've got one of the old boiled, uh, boiled sweet uh, tins. But what I keep in this is my matches and the fuel tablets, the hexamine tablets for the cooker. All right. You can still pick these tins up. I mean, you scour things like eBay, go into junk shops, um, little sort of collectors boutiques, things like that, and you, you'll find them. You know, they can't go for silly money, but you, you can pick up bargains now and again as well. <clears throat> and then the last thing I've got in here, well, sorry, second last thing, is an actual reproduction of a ration box. Right. And this has contents in it. Obviously, not edible. Um, but it's another good thing to put out on show for the public. I mean, it does keep their interest. See, that lives in the side. And then, you also have your water bottle sterilising kit. Or your water sterilising kit. Purification tablets. Small little tin like this. You've got your purification tablets and your sterilising tablets there. And maybe you can still find these kicking around. Um, I got this, I think I got this about two, two, three years ago. Probably paid about three, four pounds for it. Um, I do realise they go for more than that. But if you're patient, you're going to find stuff like this. And you're, they're going to be relatively inexpensive. Um... And my advice is don't jump on the first thing that pops up because you're going to spend a fortune and probably six weeks later you're going to find something exactly the same at half the price. So take your time with uh, putting your stuff together. And then that basically is what is carried in the pack. There's going to be a couple of other things that you would add to that. You're going to add things like um, spare socks, um, Possibly a, or a towel for the wash kit. Uh, just little other odds and ends. You know, you, things like you know your, your clasp knives. Some I've seen some people keep, keeping the clasp knife in the, the wash roll. I've seen them on the lanyards in the pockets. I've seen them off the belts. You know you would have I don't know maybe a torch, monoculars. You could have little little things to add to that, but you. you you're constrained with the amount of kit you can get in here. I mean, this is I think this has been made that only the specific things that you need for a 24 hour period would be carried in this pack and nothing else. So, anyway, enough of me rabbiting on. Probably bored you now. Uh, but hopefully, you have found this kind of informative and helpful. Um, and if you want another video, <laughs> let me know. If you want me to shut up, just tell me, right? Well, thanks very much. Right, bye.